I was a knife bro that appreciates traditional traditionals, non-traditional traditionals, modern traditionals, traditional pocket knives, the retailer, or C. Risner, as it's known to some people, a place I buy my knife crack from often, hit me up and asked me if I'd like to borrow a few prototypes of his upcoming Ohio River Jack. Now, normal people would have broken that last sentence up into three or four, but I guess you could say, uh, this style of writing is my superpower. Now, I love being in the loop more than other knife bros because I am so often out of the loop. Anyway, I was so excited and accepted immediately when he offered, then I proceeded to sit on the footage for at least a month so other people could make a video and get it out before me. I never waste an opportunity to squander an opportunity around here. Which is why I've seen quite a few knife channels blow past me and subscribers. Never getting that play button apparently. Anyway, the Ohio River Jack scene here in the fan favorite dimensions part is designed by Austin from C. Risner. And it comes in a few flavors. Some have the full TI treatment. Uh, most will have micarta. There'll be a dual blader in there. Just a mixture of blade profiles and uh, cover materials. But they all have the same basic handle pattern. Okay, okay, it's not the fan favorite part of these videos. Around here we call that part the end. <laughs> yeah, we have good times, uh, subscribers and me. Now per the C. Risner page, this is a new pattern. The Ohio River Jack. Traditional knives are often referred to in patterns. Now, if you go back and look at some of the vintage knife catalogs, for fun like average people do on Friday evenings, you'll see a lot of patterns reused and tweaked over the decades. Different makers can have their, for example, swaybacks, their sunfish, their cigars, their gun stocks, their bronze crowns, the blowfishes, the balloon knots, the coffin drops, the devil daggers, the hobo jacks, the chicken heads, the tight ends, the cat sprays, the rat faces, the rope dopes and the moose smokers. Now a lot of great history here in these patterns. I don't want to hear anyone laughing. In fact, I remember a rousing argument over on blade forums once about if the balloon knot and the bronze crown were pretty much the same pattern. I don't want to spoil it though. But we're here for the Ohio River Jack. Austin loaned me the prototypes of the single spear point in natural canvas micarta, the double blade in green canvas micarta, and an all titanium handled sheep's foot blade. Now let's examine the blade first. First, they have all of this in common. They all have flat grinds made from the M390s, which I think seems to be one of the more popular stainless steel varieties in the modern traditional. It's like the high end of the mod trads. <laughs> Let's not call it that. Lion Steel, Viper, Jack Wolf, etc. And uh, these particular knives here are made by QSP. Now I've reviewed a few QSPs in the past and found them to all be delightfully made knives. I'm partial to a good spear point. It's one of my more favorite profiles. But that sheep's foot on the titanium is pretty nice looking too. Note that the double bladers have a spear point and a secondary worn cliff. You know, the worn cliff is not to be confused with the sheep's foot single blade. Now, hear me out. This is an important distinction not to ever confuse a worn cliff with the sheep's foot or a 50 something gentleman with a wool vest and brim tat will drive all the way from an Indianapolis suburb to politely educate you about the distinct differences and the traditional uses for each. So let's not do this guys, as we really need to spare his wife a 30 minute explainer on how to refill the bird feeder out back once a day. And then when he gets home, he will write the most scathingly passive aggressive forum post you have ever read. All his friends nodding in agreement at home behind their gateway computers. The joke is I'm not even a millennial. I'm a bitter Gen Xer just like the rest of them. Now these work as general purpose everyday carry knives. The blade is sharp and utilitarian. Blade stock is in line with other traditionals, at least traditionals manufactured in the modern era from the mid 2000s and later. Although I have a half dozen or so made before the 1980s and they have a similar blade stock, some thicker, a few thinner. I have GECs that range from 2.3 to nearly 2.9 millimeters and this is somewhere in the middle of that. It's perfectly average. I know the Bexar gets raves for its price and thinness of stock, so let's hope YouTubers never find out about Swiss Army knives. I'm sure one day I'll get around to reviewing it, but I'm not on the list, okay? Is this bitterness here? Maybe. Okay, the spring and the action, or the walk and the talk as the vested ones say. Now being that these are prototypes and I see in the notes on the update page for them, the initial proto back springs were weaker, so these I believe are more the second round proto. Now spring tension on these is about where a lion steel shuffler is, you know, that was kind of like my first modern traditional, complete with a half stop on each blade, which is great, I love half stops. It's not quite as stout as the Wolf Jack or the new GEC 36s. Some people don't like them that strong though, but it's still strong and not overbearing. I like a spring that takes a strong pull and has a good snap when you pop it, pop, 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 pop with your thumb. 
I can even handle a touch stronger than these because I'm I'm not bragging, but I'm pretty strong. Have you guys seen my muscles? All models here uh, have a similar uh, pull and walk and talk, you know, about the same. I mean, variances are, if you can tell them apart, then you're a liar. Now, 10 years ago, if someone would have told me I'd be writing paragraphs about back springs, I'd say future me sounds like a real boring piece of crap, and I'd be right. Now, Austin noted that they intend to have flush liners and covers on the finals. You know, I've been talking about that glassy smoothness back there. Pretty good, though. Nicer than a Benchmade proper, you know, and people, people love those things, apparently. Handles are nice and comfortable. No hot spots anywhere, as the grips are pretty neutral. Macarta here looks nice and is not splotchy. You know, my splotchy one was the Tortuga. You know, if you remember that video. If you don't remember that video, I understand. These, these all kind of suck. The bolsters and liners here are a one-piece design per side. Now remember, from the Jack Wolf video, we called them integral. Yeah, like the locks, the handle. Fun word, although rumor has it, you might get the band hammer for using it in some places, much like the word titanium or M390. Now the jigging on the titanium variant is nice and gives it a great hand feel. I, that's all I had to say about that part there. Comparisons. Now these are a new pattern, but they resemble the proportions of a sunfish or the elephant toenail pattern. So we'll go mainly with comparisons to those, even though, you know, they're kind of a cigar pattern. And the overall length is similar to the size of a Benchmade proper for something everyone's familiar with. They're not massive, still under a 3mm blade stock. So let's look at a GEC 36 I've had for a while. Now this is a hand reground modded blade, so it's not quite stock. It's been thinned out reasonably well, closer to the edge. Doesn't have the half stop on the older model, you know, the, this, this older model here, but I really like it. And overlook the fact that it doesn't have a half stop. This is about a similar pull to the Ohio River Jack. Now the 36 from this year. The prior 36 here, you know, the one I just showed you, is from 08, which is GEC in its first few years. I think they started in 2006. And now that they're like 15 or 16 or whatever, I'm not good at math. They have refined their technique and their pattern on making these. Very smooth spine, covers, the glass-like smoothness now. The new 36s have a half stop, which the old 2008 version doesn't have, and are a stronger pull, more so a little than the Ohio River Jack. Not a ton, but noticeable. New 36s are more like the Jack Wolf. The old 36 is more like the Ohio River Jack. Still a strong pull. I've said this already, I think I'm padding for length at this point. And I think the 36 is my new favorite GEC pattern. Maybe a top three. I do like the I do like the symmetry of the dual bolsters on like the beer and sausage tool and the cigar pattern. So that's a favorite. I do kind of like the sway backs too. Now overall, I think the spear points are a little more versatile than Warncliffe. Or uh, are these uh, are these sheep's foot? Oh, I forgot already. Please, hopefully, a man that can tell the difference isn't watching. I'm sure he could teach a young guy like me a thing or two about respecting pocket knives and the gentlemen that carry them. This, this is very embarrassing for the channel, okay? Now, here it is next to a $20 Rough Rider. You know, I paid for 20 bucks for this at C. Risner Cutlery. I, I buy a lot of knives from him. He's a good retailer. If you don't follow him on Instagram, then, uh, you know, you're an idiot. Actually, you're an idiot if you have Instagram at all, but that's for another video. It's a good price. There are some nitpicks to the fit and finish. It's uh, muddier springs, some gaps where the materials join together or mate. GECs are impossible to get nowadays, and if you're not an extremely online, moderately condescending older man who posts more than a teenager, then you can't get them. And the Rough Riders use similar materials to a GEC. They are made in China, you know. A lot of people have the China problem. I don't I don't have the China problem. I just buy knives I like. The Micarta and Bone are nice, though, on these. How about one more GEC? The Forum Barlow Knife. Great little feller. I see a little stain on the blade. It means I've been using it occasionally. I have quite a few Great Eastern cutleries now, but I try to use them all to at least hose the resale value as much as possible. Wrapping it up. Thanks to Austin at C. Risner, the proprietor of Traditional Pocket Knives. It's a, it's a good website. I bought quite a few knives from them. I, I buy like, I apparently I've been buying like once a week there now. Lots of Rough Riders recently. Plan on doing an upcoming video. I own like seven now. You know, real normal stuff for a guy that owns like 30 GECs. And I just bought one of those weed cutlery knives with the classy pot leaf on them. So, someone help. Looks like the kind of knife that would end up in a sheriff's department shadow box of shame. Sir, we found a machete, three cold steels, and uh, this thing. Says it was his grandpa's knife. All right, bake them away, toys. So as far as I can tell, these are only going to be available through his store over there, you know, uh, traditional pocket knives. 
and sometime at the end of May or mid-June, they will be available. You can always shoot them an email or DM on Instagram if you want to find out more about these. He's a really nice guy. Now his website and Instagram are listed below the video. Say hi to the patrons. Thank them for enabling me to upgrade my camera and computer so these are in 4K now. My back porch in 4K. Yay. So like, subscribe, comment, and do a solid on me and click that alert bell immediately below the video so it'll alert you about any releases that I, I you know, put out. I swear it won't be too much a waste of your time. Now thanks for watching.